Well, good evening, everybody. We thank you for joining in again for this short little uh, review of a very well-known book amongst Christians, especially of a bygone day and generation. It's by Dr. Andrew Bonner, and the title of the book is The Memoir and Remains of Robert Murray McShane, a Christian classic. I think every earnest and sincere Christian should get a copy of this book, keep it and read it, and you can refer to it again and again and again. Mr. McShane was one of Scotland's favourite sons as far as the church was concerned. He ministered in the 19th century and his life was very short. In fact, he didn't even see his 30th year. He went to be with the Lord at the age of 29. Earnest and sincere as a young person, he didn't come to know the, the Savior until he was a young man. And yet as a young boy, he was proficient in many, many subjects at school. He flared in the languages. He was familiar with Greek and Hebrew, even as a primary school child. Went to university, was brought up in church circles, was pious and religious as far as the world was concerned, but yet did not have a real saving interest in Jesus Christ. In the church background that he was brought up in, the Church of Scotland, sadly the Word of God had been replaced by lengthy homilies about morality and religion generally, and there was very little, if any, preaching of Christ in the church that he was familiar with and brought up in. He never really clearly heard the gospel, and yet as a young man he came under the influence of the Word of God and gave his heart and his life to the Lord Jesus Christ and was called into the Christian ministry as a young man in his early 20s and ministered for just a few years in the city of Dundee in a church known there as St. Peter's. The Bonner brothers, Andrew Bonner and Horatius Bonner, were close friends with the saintly McShane. And one of the burdens that lay in the heart of Robert Murray McShane was that of revival. Revival came to his parish, but in an unusual way. God's servant, Mr. McShane, was in Israel. He had a love for the Holy Land. He had a love for the Jewish people. And on a visit to the Holy Land one year, or the nation of Israel, he had asked a friend, William Chalmers Burns, another young Scottish preacher, to take the charge on the oversight of his parish in Dundee. And whenever McShane was away, God moved mightily amongst the parishioners and very quickly sent revival. And revival began to flood right throughout the parish and visit other areas as well. God's servant was certainly not jealous that the Lord had been pleased to use another minister to such great effect in his own parish, but rather entered into the spirit of joy and rejoicing that God had come as showers upon the mowing grass. That just shows us the humble heart and the true and earnest and sincere heart and the pure motives that God's servant had in praying for revival. One thing that stands out in the life and ministry of Robert Murray McShane was his practical godliness. You know, whenever he died, the funeral cortege was making its way through the streets of Dundee. And newspapers carried reports about the vast crowds that had stood to watch the cortege go by. Many of them were not church-going people. Many of them were not Christian people, but most of them were well aware of the type of man that McShane was. They say that the footpaths were five and six deep with people. And grown men stood and wept as the remains of his servant went by. In fact, one paper carried the news headline that Jesus Christ himself walked the streets of Dundee in the body of Robert Murray McShane. What a remarkable statement. The Apostle Paul said something similar, always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. 
And that was true of Mr. McShane. I just want to read a little excerpt from the book uh, that records something that happened shortly after his death. Listen to these words. After his death, a note was found unopened, which had been sent to him in the course of the following week when he lay in a fever. It ran thus. I hope... You will pardon a stranger for addressing to you a few lines. I heard you preach last Sabbath evening and it pleased God to bless that sermon to my soul. It was not so much what you said as your manner of speaking that struck me. I saw in you a beauty in holiness that I had never seen before. You also said something in your prayer that struck me very much. It was, Thou knowest that we love thee. O sir, what would I give that I could say to my blessed Saviour, Thou knowest that I love thee. Isn't that remarkable? He didn't even know that that letter had been written. He didn't even know that that lady probably had sat in his church and had been so blessed under his ministry. It was not so much what you said as your manner of speaking that struck me. I saw in you a beauty and holiness that I never saw before. After his passing, his friend Andrew Bonner And you should read his Diary in Life as well if you get a chance. It's a wonderful book, The Diary in Life of Andrew Bonner. But his friend Andrew Bonner wrote a biography of his friend Robert Murray McShane and then correlated a lot of his letters that Mr. McShane had written to friends and loved ones and other ministers and members of his congregation. He also collected some of his sermons together and compiled them in this great volume, The Memoir and Remains of Robert Murray McShane. There's also at the back of the book McShane's famous plan for reading the Word of God. And I uh, heartily recommend it. I've used it several times myself. In fact, I'm going through it again at the minute. Uh, Due to the lockdown, I'm a little bit ahead of myself, but it's a wonderful way uh, of reading uh, God's Word systematically. McShane's reading plan. It enables you, if you follow it closely, to read the entire Bible, once through in a year, the Psalms and the New Testament twice. Some people like to take it over two years and focus a little bit more and go into the passages maybe in a little bit more detail. Some like to read two chapters in the morning and two in the evening, or maybe three chapters personally, and then use another chapter for family devotions. But at any rate, McShane's reading plan is unsurpassed. I know that you can get it sometimes, Uh, Maybe just in a little pamphlet form that you can keep in your Bible. Sometimes it's hard to get, but you'll certainly, if you're able to get this book, it's in the back of it. And then the last few pages of the book are taken up with some songs of Zion. McShane was great at writing hymns, songs, and poetry. Jehovah said, can you, is one of the most well-known. I once was a stranger to grace and to God. I knew not my danger. Felt not my load, though friends spoke in rapture of Christ on the tree, Jehovah said, can you, was nothing to me. But maybe my all-time or maybe top three or four favorite hymns, I am a debtor, written by McShane. Listen to these words, and I leave them with you. When this passing world is done, when is sunk yon radiant sun, when I stand with Christ on high, looking o'er life's history, then, Lord, shall I fully know not to then, how much I owe. When I hear the wicked call on the rocks and hills to fall, when I see them start and shrink on the fiery deluge brink, then, Lord, shall I fully know, not to then, how much I owe. When I stand before the throne, dressed in beauty, not my own, When I see thee as thou art, love thee with unsinning heart, then, Lord, shall I fully know, not to learn how much I owe. When the praise of heaven I hear, loud as thunders to the ear, loud as many's waters noise, sweet as harps melodious voice, 
Then, Lord, shall I fully know, but not till then, how much I owe. Even on earth as through a glass, darkly let thy glory pass. May forgiveness feel so sweet, may my spirit, thy spirit's help so meet. Even on earth, Lord, make me know something of how much I owe. Chosen not for good in me, wakened up from wrath to flee. Hidden in the Saviour's side, by the Spirit sanctified, teach me, Lord, on earth to show by my love how much I owe. Oft I walk beneath the cloud, dark as midnight's gloomy shroud. But when fear is at its height, Jesus comes and all is light. Blessed Jesus, bid me show, doubting saints, how much I owe. When in flowery paths I tread, Oft by sin I'm captive led, oft I fall, but still arise, the Spirit comes, the tempter flies. Blessed Jesus, bid me show, weary sinners, all I owe. Oft the nights of sorrow reign, weeping, sickness, sighing pain. But a night thine anger burns, morning comes and joy returns. God of comforts, bid me show to thy poor how much. I owe. Oh, we are debtors, debtors to grace, debtors to God. Let's live in such a way that the world sees how much we love our Saviour. Heartily recommend this book, The Memoir and Remains of Robert Murray McShane by his good friend, Dr. Andrew Bonner. God bless you, and we'll see you next time.